Hey everybody, I just wanted to start off with a huge thank you. I have no idea how you all found this channel, but I'm so glad you did. It's been a crazy couple months and I, I'm so happy to have you all in my life now. And if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, feel free to join the party and uh, we're having we're having a good time over here. I've also started a Patreon if you want to help me out in that way. I'll put the link down below. And uh, yeah, it's uh, just, I'm just, I'm just so excited. When I started thinking about this topic, I kept thinking of specific examples for my life. So I thought I would share some of them in this video. So this one's gonna be a little more personal than the other ones. It's been 84 years and I can still smell the fresh paint. When I was a teenager, I went to summer camp. It was a church camp, not like Jesus camp, church camp. I sensed in my heart tonight what I heard the Lord say is that there's some kids here that say they're Christians, they go to church all the time, but you're one thing when you're at church and you're another thing when you're at school with your friends. You're a phony and a hypocrite. But church camp nonetheless. Honestly, I do have some amazing memories from camp. There was a group of students from a Bible college that led all the games and music. One night, one of them did a talk about how important youth ministry was and why we always need to reach the next generation. At the end, he had us close our eyes and asked if anyone felt called to be a youth pastor to raise their hands. I raised my hand. For the next 15 years or so, this would become my life's purpose. Wow, you're really great with kids. Thanks, I'm also a youth pastor. It took me many years to realize that this was just an ad for a Bible college. And even longer than that, to realize that nobody has a set life's purpose and you don't have to figure out what God's will is before making decisions. Besides my supposed life's purpose, another thing I discovered as a teenager was a little film series called Star Wars. Heard of it? That's no moon. I was a little late to the party because I grew up around a lot of very Christian people who told me it was new age, which just meant evil. It's pretty important here. Uh, this comes from Seth. He wants to, can Star Wars figures be demonic? <laughs> can Star Wars figures be demonic? Yes, they can. And the Smurfs can be the model. Oh, yeah. One of the things that always stood out to me is how different Luke Skywalker and Han Solo were. Besides the fact that Luke was a whiny little brat and Han Solo was the coolest dude in the world. But it's a whole nother year. Luke knew what he wanted and believed he was destined to fight in the rebellion and become a great Jedi like his father before him. And Han kind of just went with the flow. Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. But more on that in a bit. Let's get back to my life's purpose. In the evangelical world, it's emphasized that God has a plan for our lives. And I think that uh, the difference between uh, what I call the survival level of living, the success level of living, and the significance level of living is, do you figure out what on earth am I here for? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. So believe God has a plan for you and that he's going to show it to you in his time. Okay, I don't know about you, but I want to make sure that I'm in God's perfect will for my life because I know that is the place where I'm going to experience favor and divine blessings from God. But God is also writing a story in your life to tell his story. What's God's plan? Not, not just what's, what am I to do today? What's, what, what does God want me to do in this particular situation? But what, what's his plan? What's his purpose? What's he trying to accomplish in my life? Did God just put you here just to exist for a while and then call you home? No. He has a purpose, a plan, and a will for your life. Nobody can fire you and interrupt the purpose of God. There is no stopping what God has started until it is complete. He will see it through. And you are on a constant search to find that purpose and to find God's will. It's not just about your career either. It's about who you date and marry, where you live, and how many kids you have, and, and what you do in your spare time. Step number one in making a moral decision, pray. Do not pray for the answer. Now, there's nothing wrong with saying, Lord, what car should I buy? Lord, what job should I take? Lord, what woman should I marry? Unless you're a woman, and that's a very wrong prayer. Well, that's definitely something a piece of garbage would say. I remember I really wanted to tell someone how I felt about them, 
And one night we were hanging out, and, and I prayed for a sign from God about whether I should go for it. Then all of a sudden, the restaurant started playing that Weezer song that said, if you're wondering if I want you to, I want you to. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's clear as day. So I told her that I had feelings for her, and she did not share those feelings. Amy Santiago, will you? No! Get up! So I had gone through Bible college, spent countless hours volunteering at youth groups, did my internship as a youth pastor, ran a church day camp for less than minimum wage, and eventually became a youth pastor at a church. Thanks, but not as awesome as Jesus. You guys are the Christian youth group? Then I began to question whether this really was my calling. I loved the kids, but my anxiety was heightened by dozens of them running around me yelling. I hated church politics, and this little old church lady had it out for me. It was around this time I started getting into writing and started to think more about film. I began to really pray about whether that was my actual calling. I started to look for any sign I could that God wanted me to pursue film. When I got a call from my friend asking if I'd help him with a movie he was working on. And that was that. God was giving me a sign. Would that it was so simple. Would that it was so simple. Would that it was so simple. My dear boy, why do you say I mean, that? he knew I was a creative person and had worked on a project with him before, and he knew I would do it for free, but, but it was a sign from God. I also had someone tell me after I preached on a Sunday that I had found my calling, but I guess that didn't count as a sign. Well, when I was a kid, my mom told me that was my special purpose, and someday I'd find out what that special purpose was. And let's go back to Star Wars for a minute. Darth Vader captures Princess Leia and has stolen plans for the Death Star. You know what I'm talking about, yellow hoodie? You specifically? A running theme in all nine movies is destiny and being chosen and also playing around with that trope. You were the chosen one. It was said that you would destroy this and not join them. The chosen one trope is something you've seen over and over again in film and literature. The character's path is laid before them, and all they have to do is believe in themselves and not mess it up. How? He is the one. Master Builder. No, I Master Builder. Oh, so you've never heard of the prophecy? No, I, or the special? No, no, I'm a liar. You must come with me. Your destiny awaits. I don't have a destiny. I'm destiny free, really. Yes, you have. You are the chosen one. You alone can stop them. Who? The vampires. Huh? The mark. Oh, that. It's just a birthmark, and I'll thank you not to stare. He's the chosen one. You are the chosen one whom the sacred parchment prophesied would lead us to glory. I love the chosen one. Loving him is lots of fun. We love the chosen one. Not as much as me. Luke had special powers because his dad had special powers. He had droids land at his feet which led him to Obi-Wan. His family died leaving him no choice but to join the rebellion. And he didn't really make a choice of his own until halfway through Empire. And that turned out to be a trap. It's a trap. God looks for exactly what he wants. And I don't mean to get biological, but he fertilizes the right egg at the right moment. Do you realize the percentage chance of you being born when you were born to do what you do? And you're going to walk around in self-doubt trying to figure out if God chose you. You ought to know God chose you. You ought to believe God chose you. And you ought to go through your life with your head held high no matter what is in your bank account because I'm chosen. We want to know that we have a purpose, that there is a wonderful plan for our lives, that if we just follow the map and look for signs, we'll do great things. Well, that's why it's important to look for the multiple doors that need to open, not just one or two doors. When God is really confirming something in your life, all the necessary steps that need to happen for that thing to happen will actually happen. God begins to open certain doors in your life while at the same time closing other doors this is oftentimes God's way of saying, this is the direction that I want your life to go down because I am behind the scenes orchestrating things and working out the details on your behalf. You know, my mom always said, God never closes a door without opening a window. You know, my mother always said, 
Close that damn door or I will throw you out that window! <laughs> so I said, Lord Jesus, if this role is for me, I need a sign and I need it now. And not a minute later, not a second later, I keep a watch of my deceased brother. And the watch went off, the alarm on the watch went off when I said, Lord Jesus, if this role is for me, I need a sign. The watch went off. And the time on the watch said 823. A lot of people don't know, when I used to work for the nursing home, I had an old lady always sending me across the street to play the lottery. And I would play the lottery too, and my number was 823. <laughs> and I would never win, no. Holy Spirit, he will often speak to us and reveal what decisions we need to make on a regular basis in a variety of situations. Lorraine, my density has brought me to you. What? Oh, what I meant to say was Wait a minute, don't I know you from somewhere? Yes, yes, I'm George, George McFly. I'm your density. I mean, your destiny. And remember this, that God knowing us perfectly knows how we came into the world, what our advantages were, what our disadvantages were, what our opportunities were, what our parents knew, how they knew to raise us and not raise us. All of that is a part of God's wisdom and knowledge and His grace and goodness and mercy in working in our hearts throughout our life. So I finished the school year with my teens and said goodbye and started working on the movie. A couple of months in, after a very long summer of shooting, we were filming this really emotional scene outside. There was a storm coming and we knew we had to film the scene as quickly as possible. As the couple fought, you could see a storm moving in in the background, and as one of them drove away, it began to rain. We went in and looked at the footage right away. To us, it looked amazing. We joked about how if you use CGI for the storm and rain machines to get the same effect, it would cost a lot of money. I took this to mean that God wanted us to make this movie, and he was giving me a reassurance that he was on my side, and I had chosen the right path you confirmation that you're doing what he wants you to do in your specific situation, you will also experience biblical emotions. Emotions should certainly not be our only guide in life, but the Bible also does say that when we are obeying God and doing what he says, there will be certain emotions that we experience in our own hearts and in our own lives. Until the next day when I found out that not too far from where we were filming, that same storm had blown a piece of metal off a building which struck and killed a five-year-old boy. That shot didn't really seem worth it after that. That sign from God didn't seem to make as much sense. So after making you all depressed, let's return once again to Star Wars. Han just took a job carting an old man, a teenager, and some droids around. What's the cargo? Only passengers? Myself, the boy, two droids? And no questions asked. He was paid for the job, and he was on his way. He then made the choice to return to the fight on his own. You're all clear, kid. Now let's blow this thing and go home. He wasn't the secret son of anyone. He didn't have a destiny laid out for him. Doing the right thing was just something he chose to do. Like I said, in the evangelical world, you like to look for signs, and look to the Bible and other Christians for guidance about what to do next and what path you're supposed to follow. Is there, you know, something you'd like to tell Oprah? Oh yeah, I hear thou seekest a sign. Well, is this clear enough? <laughs> Check it out. The will of God is determined by knowing the Word of God. Mm. So what I mean by that is that uh, God's will is, is set forth in His Word. The application of that Word to our individual situations and decisions is either clear based upon what Scripture says, or it's going to be a matter of discernment based on the principles found in the statements God has given us. And I could perhaps, perhaps, offer some sort of nugget here or there, but that's nothing close to somebody that you know, family, church, elders, who can start to pepper you with questions. Hey, did you think about this? What about that? Why are you thinking like that? There is wisdom to be gleaned from godly people. 
there comes that point when God reveals to you what He wants you to do, but like Elijah, you've got to decide, am I going to say yes, I'm going to go to Ahab and speak the pronouncement or not? Seek God on a deep level and go into real serious fasting, or we're just spending regular, consistent, intimate time with God. It is often in those seasons when we're spending consistent time with Him that He will actually reveal His will to us and speak very clearly to us. As I walked further and further from my faith, I began to find joy in the unknown. I began to be okay with not being a chosen one. Remember, Dad, all glory is fleeting. So? Beware the Ides of March. No. Dad it's easy to think about the idea of God having a plan for you as a good thing, that he's looking out for you, that he knows what's best for you, that having a sense of purpose will make you feel better about your life. But the flip side to that is if it doesn't work out, you can feel like you failed God or the people in your church or the people in your life, and you can feel trapped. Len. Yeah! I'm stuck. Yeah, I know, Bob. No, I'm really stuck. What are you talking about? <gasps> are you telling me you weren't stuck before? And like being a youth pastor or a filmmaker, I've continued to fail at many things and will continue to fail at many more. And that's okay. I gave it a shot. I tried things without getting a sign or permission, and it's been a fun adventure. Like Han, some of the greatest heroes just kind of found themselves where they were and did what they had to do. These are referred to as unchosen ones, or self-chosen ones. No! Welcome to the party, pal! I can't carry it for you. But I can carry you! Come on! This is my house. I have to defend it. Call to order the first meeting of the ancient mystic society of No Homers. Yay! Hey, fellas, can I join? Sorry, No Homers. <laughs> As you walk away from religion or any sort of supernatural or superstitious outlook, you can feel a little lost. There's no longer a big plan for how things are supposed to turn out and what your life is going to be, and that can be really scary. We are the people who make sure things happen according to plan. But scary's okay. Scary can make you who you are and who you're going to become. And that's pretty cool. Thanks all for watching. If you can think of somebody who might enjoy this, please send it their way. And uh, you have yourself a wonderful day. Love you. Troy, there is a prophecy. I miss Hobbit so much. I'm ashamed to confess that I once thought that this might be me. Now I realize that it's you. You are the true repairman, Troy. You fix not only air conditioners, but the men who fix them. It's a trade school. It's a two-year degree in boxes that make rooms cold. Work, 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 Sky Moon. <laughs>